All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We are in the Freedom Studios. I'm having a cup of coffee early this morning. Got a meeting in a couple of minutes, so we're going to bang this video out real quickly. Uh, got a couple things we're going to be doing reviews on. Have you ever seen the Sayonix deal here? This is basically a camera with a wide aperture and a whole lot of ISO, which uh, gives you the ability to see something at night. Now, is it similar to a PVS-14? Not really. But for the money, you're not going to find a whole lot better than this. Uh, also, we got the guys over here, Hit Arms, Laser Training, and then uh, Mischief Machine. These guys right here, this is some pretty cool stuff, American made, right here in, uh, in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Love this dude. All right, so anyway, let's talk about this. This was uh, an article uh, sent in to me by Victor. Victor, thank you so much. It's uh, people like you to keep this thing going. And I like... Not necessarily just, again, like jumping on somebody else's uh, YouTube channel or looking at uh, stuff online, but I love getting information from the viewer. So if you guys got some really cool stuff that you'd like to share, send it over, and I'd like to do a story on it or give my viewpoint on what's going on. Now, this is a story that was uh, published in uh, Politico, and it is an opinion, an op-ed, and basically what that means is you've got a, a tremendous liberal who's an elitist who actually thinks that his shit doesn't stink, and he's going to tell you what his thoughts are on gun control and what should actually happen. And this is really going to hit home with a couple of you guys because he is saying that militias... Uh, are a matter of national security. And I have to agree with him, but without militias, uh, if something were to happen in this country, you can't depend on, well, the military and law enforcement. But his idea is that militias are a national security because they create a threat against the control that the Democrats have right now. Why do you suppose those individuals uh, in the National Guard are still sitting up there in D.C.? It's because the Dems are creating a takeover right now. They've already voted uh, to make D.C. Uh, the 51st state. And the only reason they're doing that is to create a power grab. Why do you suppose you got Jared Nadler up there who's sitting around trying to add four seats to the Supreme Court justice? They're doing stuff that's not right and unconstitutional, and they know it, and that's why they need that protection there. It's amazing to me that the individuals in this country that are surrounded by guns want to take your guns away from you. And this is a story where this guy and his, his co-writer are basically doing it. So let's go ahead and get into this real quickly. Whoa, what happened there? All right. Uh, so anyway, Politico, and I'll put the link down below. This is an opinion about law and order. Why gun control is now a matter of national security. Biden should seize on the rise of far-right militias. Far-right militias. He equates the far-right militias, any militia, no matter, far-right, left-right, I don't care. What's funny is that they don't create Black Lives Matter as a uh, terrorist group. But anybody who's walking around with a bunch of firearms is a terrorist. And he is making you out to be equal to jihadist. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so the guy's name is Stephen Simon, an international relations professor at Colby College, and Jonathan Stevenson, a senior fellow at the International Institute of Strategic Studies. And these guys, they are elitists. They are academics. Uh, one of them served on the National Security Council during the Clinton administration and Obama administration, including the senior director for counterterrorism. And basically that's sitting around and studying people, trying to figure out if they're going to do something before they do it. It's kind of like a red flag law, ladies and gentlemen. You are guilty no matter what. And if you have a firearm, according to the Democrats, you are a potential criminal. You will eventually do that. <laughs> all right, moving on to the story for all the tragic mass shooting headlines this year. The American gun control debate seems permanently stuck. He goes on to say, talking about all the other events that have happened in the recent. I refuse to acknowledge those things because I'm not going to incentivize and give somebody an incentive to go out and do something stupid like that. Hey, listen, man, if you got some issues that you want to talk to anybody about, reach out to somebody because going out and creating havoc with a firearm is the last thing we, as creators or firearm enthusiasts, want to happen. We share Biden's view that the level of U.S. gun violence is a national embarrassment. You know what's a national embarrassment? It's pansies like this trying to create havoc under writing. But as a National Security Council veterans who have specialized in counterterrorism with direct experience involving far-right American terrorism, burgeoning jihadism, and the Northern Irish extremism in the 1990s. So again, he's trying to equate you 
somebody who may be in a militia. A militia could be any one, two or three people who got together to help protect the neighborhood. That's a militia. But you're a threat to our government. <laughs> yeah, basically, let's just go ahead and say you're a threat to the government. You're a threat to the government because you won't sit there and take it. <sighs> Eric Swalwell once said, you can't defeat us because we have nukes. <laughs> what a moron. We also see a new threat rising, one that has potential to change the urgency of the debate, the growing and heavily armed American militia movement, which made a show of force on January 6th. What a piece of shit. He is lying. Not one firearm was found during that whole thing they called an insurgent, a resurrection. It's absolute bullshit. You had a bunch of people that were rioting and jumping through through some doors. The only person that was actually killed was killed by a Capitol Hill police, and that was a negligent discharge. And they won't release that guy's name, and he hasn't been charged with anything as of yet. And everybody else died of natural causes. The media has currently lied, and again, this guy's lying. Oh my God, American militia movement. Okay, whatever. Increasingly, as militias acquire and stockpile weapons, they're turning guns from public health. <laughs> they're turning guns from a public health concern into a national security threat. And it's possible that the proponents of reform, including advocacy groups, congressional leaders, and Biden began addressing it that way, they'd have a chance of energizing the debate against the National Rifle Association and its allies. The mere fact that he puts the NRA up front on this whole deal irritates the dog shit out of me. And I'm sorry I'm using profanity in this thing, but this guy fires me up because he is an intellect. He's an academic. And they don't know anything about what they're talking about, only what they write. Because when they write it, they're supposed to be the highest authority on it, and you're supposed to believe what they say. Ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> the shock of the insurrection has increased the political burdens of an NRA in an internal disarray and offered a new perspective on the need for significant gun control legislation. I'm just going to leave it at that. You guys can read the whole thing. But I'm going to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this is the stuff that fires me up. They create a story. They create an agenda based on their agenda. And they create a lie so that the general public that doesn't know any better believes what they're talking about. There are several articles out there that just really get me steamed. This is one of them. Generating bipartisan consensus for an effective crackdown on firearms will always be difficult. Yes, you're right. It always will be difficult, especially when your crackdown is based on lies. Oh, guys, this is the stuff that just blows my millennium. Anyway, you can read the story. Go on and see what it is. Uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, here's the whole thing that these people don't understand, is if somebody wants to create havoc, they want to create harm, they will do it, no matter what firearm they do. The symbol of militia volunteers carrying assault weapons and the reality of them, they're using them lethally, have historically been enormously powerful social forces. I don't even get that. Here's another little aspect. Right-wing extremists hold guns in vastly disproportionate numbers. Law enforcement appears constrained to tolerate their training in military-style camps more or less openly and their incendiary, often seditious rhetoric turbocharged by the internet as the lawful exercise of free speech. For the love of God, this guy is writing in such a level that I can't hardly talk. <laughs> Unreal. The possibility of muscular legislation like the red flag laws permitting law enforcement officers to seize firearms from those judged to be a public safety risk has only fueled their anti-government furor. Well, absolutely. When you talk about taking someone's firearms without due process, a constitutional right, yeah, we get pissed. Absolutely. And that fuels the fire. When you are holding <laughs> a lighter underneath a gas can and heating it up, that's what this guy's doing. It's crazy. Okay, let me go ahead. In 1981, emboldened by the political impact of the prison hunger strikes, Danny Morrison, a senior official of Sinn Féin, the Irish Republican Army's political alter ego, asked ret rhetorically, who here really believes we can win the war through the ballot box? But will anyone here object if a ballot paper in this hand and an armalite in the other, we take power in Ireland? So yeah, this guy equates you guys to somebody who is going to take a gun to the ballot box. Anyway, 
<sighs> Guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. This is uh, These are the people that we are up against, the elites, the academics, the absolute, absolutely just take a story and they will run with it and they will create a myth and create legislation based on that myth. Go to Boy32. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform who support our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. This is the stuff that uh, really, really, really screws with our ability to exercise our Second Amendment right. Y'all be good. I am out of here. Boom.